no significant difference in diagnostic accuracy of cytopathologists and interventional radiologists perform ultrasound guided final aspiration of head and neck lesions and analysis of outcomes by two practices at one institution. And this has been presented by Dr. Dumagia. And this is a study from Cornell. Good morning and uh, thank you. And um, before I start, I just say we have nothing to disclose. So the final aspiration biopsy is a commonly performed procedure, um, which is being commonly performed by a number of different specialists, ranging from cytopathologists to surgeons, radiologists, and endocrinologists who are practicing in a number of different environments, ranging from the inpatient bedside to their own outpatient clinics, and using a number of different targeting uh, methods, ranging from palpation, most commonly to ultrasound guidance, okay. and then certainly in the case of radiologists, CT guidance. So the cytopathologist performed fine needle aspiration biopsy is a generally uh, accepted uh, method for performing diagnostic biopsies and has been shown in published literature to reduce the number of unsatisfactory or inadequate specimens that are obtained at time of biopsy. Uh, a follow-on argument is that this increases the cost efficiency of the procedure by reducing the number of repeat biopsies that are needed to be performed. It also gives the pathologist direct control over both the targeting of lesions as well as the smear preparation and triaging of the specimens. And it's a unique opportunity in pathology to obtain further uh, potentially helpful uh, history from the patient and also perform the physical exam directly. So the addition of ultrasound imaging guidance to the fine needle aspiration has really increased the number of lesions that can be targeted both to include smaller lesions and also lesions in more anatomically sensitive or um, difficult to, uh, to, to palpate places. And it's been shown in the literature to further decrease inadequacy rates. The cytopathologist performed uh, ultrasound guided FNA, uh, while not common, uh, has been validated in the literature and really allows the cytopathologist to precisely sample the diagnostic area in the lesion. So for example, in a solid and cystic nodule, the ability to go after specifically the solid area is something that the imaging guidance really brings. And uh, it's, not has, it's been shown uh, to decrease further the inadequacy rates uh, among cytopathologists, I guess down to 1% in some studies, but certainly below the range of palpation. And it's also been shown to increase the specificity and negative predictive value of those biopsies. So what we wanted to do at Cornell was to do a study which would prove to our surgeon colleagues who are referring cases to us that the product that we're providing is equivalent to what they can achieve at an outpatient diagnostic radiology center. And so what we did was we wanted to compare outcomes um, at our institution done by us with those performed at a commonly used radiologist center. So in our study, uh, our practice is a trained cytopathologist who uses the ultrasound uh, machine shown and a linear array transducer and is on call both at outpatient clinics and also at the inpatient bedside um, on an ad hoc basis. The radiology practice uses the professional instrument shown, a combination of the linear transducer and hockey stick transducers, and has an on-site cytopathologist from our practice to assess the adequacy and triage the specimens needed. This was a retrospective case review of all ultrasound-guided fine needle aspirations performed in our practice, and also all those that were referred from the outpatient center over the 33-month period, including mostly sites in the head and neck. Um, and we further substratified these cases to those that uh, were referred to surgery and had histopathologic follow-up to use as a gold standard. We then looked at not only the, um, the diagnostic outcomes, but also quality measures of the uh, procedure itself. So what's seen here is that there were 108 ultrasound-guided uh, FNAs performed at our practice and 67 performed by the radiologist over the study period. Of those, 37 in our practice and 21 at the, from the radiologist were referred for surgical intervention. So the rates of referral for surgery following biopsy are equivalent, basically, between the two practices. One measure that can be used as um, a possible quality measure is the number of passes needed to achieve adequacy. And 
since we weren't able to directly also time these procedures at both practices, it could also be a proxy for the length of the procedure. Um, in our case, there was no difference in the number of passes needed to achieve adequacy at the two practices. In the majority of cases, in both places, one pass was sufficient. So as you can see here, this is the overall diagnostic outcomes that um, we found over the study period. There's a bimodal distribution between negative and positive, um, which did not achieve a statistically significant difference between the two practices. Uh, the number of atypical uh, results was different, however, um, it didn't achieve a high enough number to achieve statistical uh, significance either. So in summary, these are the overall calculated uh, diagnostic uh, criteria or outcomes at our practices. They did not achieve statistically significant difference between the two practices, um, and the, and nor did the inadequacy rates, were, all of which were within the stated or the quoted literature of studies that have been previously performed on this technique. So in conclusion, a cytopathologist with sufficient interest and training is able to provide this procedure uh, in our hands, this is a safe, reliable, and effective procedure that can be performed, and um, the surgeons in our practice can be comfortable referring us patients in the knowledge that the patient outcomes overall are preserved, regardless of who is doing the biopsy. And that is the conclusion. question. I mean, we have a bit of a, um, I mean, our practice for a large academic center and we have a pretty close relationship with our surgeons who refer to both practices, so we weren't really able to, we, what we wanted to do with this study was to control for that variable. We didn't want to have non-assessed um, smears coming in compared to our assessed smears, so I think we could look at that, um, but in this practice that we looked at, they always have one of the staff there to assess adequacy. Martha? Did you control for the types of lesions being sampled? Because, um, you know, in our practice, we've had ultrasound for three years, but most of the patients that get referred to us still have palpable masses. So although we can evaluate the mass with ultrasound, by and large, we really don't need the ultrasound to guide the needle into the lesion to get an adequate specimen. So the value-added benefit of using ultrasound remains to be determined in the population of palpable masses. On the other hand, the radiologist is by and large going to have non-palpable masses where the ultrasound becomes a pivotal component of the procedure required to get the needle in the lesion. So I wondered if you controlled for that between the two. Of course. So in our study, um, the that we didn't specifically look at which were palpable and which were not. However, we did receive referrals at our practice for non-palpable lesions and perform them. We did look at the overall size distribution between the radiologist and our practice, and they do see they do do biopsies on smaller nodules than we do. I believe the number was somewhere around like one centimeter at their practice average, and, and like 1.8 at ours. And I think that you know as that we're fairly new and a young practice, I think that you have to set a higher threshold, a higher minimum size maybe, um, for non-palpable lesions, since as you say, you do not have the palpation to fall back on if you can't hit the target. Um, and then as we get more experienced, we can decrease the size and market that as well to the surgeons to say that we can definitely hit these nodules. How about the, but the point, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, but the point is, is that you're comparing apples and oranges yes. in a way. Possibly to a degree. Yeah. How about ultrasound characteristics? But these, so the nodules you're biopsying, they were both cystic and solid in the thyroid, or they were just solid nodules? Did you take that we, variable? No, we took all just all comers that, that we were referred. And to my knowledge, they were not, the surgeons are not referring different cases to one or the other based on anything other than, so, the purpose of our practice is really to help these surgeons to um, 
increase the turnover time between clinic to their, to their OR schedule. So we're able to actually go to their clinic and perform the procedure there, which is some, a reason that they will refer these cases. But there was a diagnostic ultrasound. There was always, yes, there was a diagnostic ultrasound. And those images were reviewed and prior to the procedure. But your practice was not biased what, what was selected to be biopsy. No, we were, no. And last point then, is talking about reimbursement and time. I mean, to travel to a doctor's office, <clears throat> use the ultrasound, which adds at least 30, 40 percent of time to yeah. the procedure, especially for a, a lesion that you actually can feel. I'm wondering about the value-added benefit of that. That's a that's a great question. In our case, you know, we have a little bit of a. Uh, I mean, we're not going all over the community. It's a. It's literally the, the outpatient building is across the street from us, and all of the providers at Cornell uh, have their practices either in our physical building or just across the street. So while it does add some time, um, it doesn't add probably more than the 10 minutes it takes us to, once we get paid, to walk across the street. But that, that is an excellent point. Thank you, Paul. Thank, Thank you. you. So the last presentation before the break is by...